Sky Bunner, Senior, Brookside Bowler. Natalie Mackey, Junior, Brookside Bowling. Lauren Roberts, Junior, Brookside Bowling. Carol Presley, Junior, Brookside Bowling. Sage Green, Senior, Brookside Bowling. Abby McDaniel, Sophomore, Brookside Bowling. Maggie Rising, Brookside Bowling, Sophomore. Peyton Clapp, Senior, Brookside Bowling. Good evening, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen. We're here tonight at uh, Brunswick Nautical Lanes, Speedbox Nautical Lanes, to watch the match between the Brookside Cardinals bowling team and the Keystone Wildcats bowling team. This is uh, from Cardinal Community TV. This broadcast is produced by Cardinal Community TV and the District Video Club. The D District Video Club is directed by Mr. Cecil and Mr. Ferguson and Mrs. Blythe. There's no camera person today except for Mr. Cecil. No other boys or girls here to help. And my my name is Jack Petrucci. And I'll, um, I'm Mr. Cecil and I'll be adding some color commentary along with Jack while I'm doing camera. Okay, the the Brookside girls are on lane 11 and 13, and the Keystone girls on 12 and 14. And all you can see on the board is the initial of their first name, unless they're up. So on lane 11, you have Sage Green and Peyton Clapp. On lane 13, you have Sky Bunner and Natalie Mankey and Lauren Roberts. So here we go on. And it, they alternate lanes. And there's a first first ball by Sage Green, but a strike. That was a nice ball. Yeah. And for Elizabeth uh, Yates on lane 12, missed a 10 pin. Got Peyton Clapp on 11, Sky Bunner on 13. Oh, she punched one through the nose and got a break. She's got a six pin. Pretty easy spare. Oh, Madison, uh, Madison Draski on uh, lane 12 throws a nice ball. For Keystone, right? And for Keystone, that's right. Peyton Clapp, spare. And we have a slight malfunction on lane 13. They need to re-spot some pins. So you can see Coach Mankey encouraging his young bowlers. Matt has been bowling since he could walk, <laughs> but he hasn't didn't start walking until he was 12. <laughs> yeah, we grew up with the Mankeys, that's for sure. Nice spare. Nice spare. Madison, Grass, no, no, it was uh, Chelsea Wood with the spare. Now they rotate lanes, so Sage Green's on 12, and the Keystone girls are on 11. On lane 13, now Natalie Mankey is up.
Sage Green left a seven pin on lane 12. Mankey a 10 pin on lane 13. It's difficult to tell what type of bowling ball they have, whether it's urethane, reactive resin, plastic, and the, the cover stock will determine how the ball reacts. Natalie Mankey with the spare on 13. Sage Green with the spare on lane 12. Thirteen, Lauren Roberts, left the ten pin. Peyton Clapp on twelve. Got a strike, nice ball. Natalie Mankey on 14 with the strike. Lauren Roberts, the 10 pin, converts. Another thing it's, it's hard to determine is the weight of the bowling balls. I would imagine these bowling balls that these girls are using are 13 to 14 pounders. Yeah, that, I'd bring probably even 12, oh, some and of you, them. And you could go up to 16, which most people aren't using it anymore. Why is that, Jack? Because they're too heavy. And especially if you're older, like me, it's just, you know, you, you get the same pin count, uh, and there's not much difference between a 15 and 16-pound ball. Oh, And you talk about the cover stock. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, why don't you explain what that means? Well, the, the ball is um, the outside of the ball. Strike on by Sage Green on lane 11. The outside of the ball is they construct them to react, react differently with the oil. So if you have a reactive resin ball, it's going to move on the oil more than, say, a urethane or a plastic ball. I would say that most, most better bowlers come with two balls, one for, the, one for a strike shot, and the second one, their spare ball, is going to be a, a harder surface, so it doesn't hook as much. So it goes straight. He Peyton Clapp has a 10 pin on lane 11. Brookside and Keystone are both in Division Two. Brookside in fifth place and Keystone in sixth. So Peyton Clapp missed that 10 pin, which uh, I would imagine is the most commonly missed pin by right-handed bowlers. Nice by Chelsea Wood, nice strike there for Keystone. Sky Bunner. Missed those two. But isn't a, when you leave a 10 pin, you and I both know this, when you leave a 10 pin, chances are you, you, you threw it right in the pocket. Should have been a strike, right? Well, yeah. It, well, it could have been a strike, but, it, but some people think they should get a strike every time they hit the pocket. Right. There's a 10 pin right there. There's a 10 pin right there. And on lane 12, Sage Green punch went through the nose and left what they refer to as double pinnacle. The four, six, seven, ten. She's gonna make two of them, which is what you do, you make two. On lane 13 is Natalie Mankey. Working on a strike. Left the baby split on the right side. Big clap on lane 12.
Had a little bucket on lane 12 for Peyton. Mankey didn't convert to baby split. Lauren Roberts now on lane 13. Now bowling is one of those, it's not like football or basketball or volleyball or wrestling. Bowling is something that you're going to be doing the rest of your life. Well, you can do the rest of your life. So you, you're you preparing yourself for a sport when you're older, out of high school, out of college. You have to understand these are only kids. And kids uh, will be kids. First shot over here on 11. Uh, Madison left all 10, threw one in the gutter. You got a spare by Lauren Roberts on 13. Yeah, nice split conversion. Uh, Sky Bunner just threw that one in the ditch. No, it punched that one through the nose. Chelsea punched that through the nose. You got a 4 6. Very difficult split. So what these kids are taught is not to pin bowl. Don't look at the pins when you're when you're in your approach. You're looking at a spot on the lane. And the farther down the lane you look and hit your spot, the more accurate you're gonna be. The closer to the foul line, if you missed your spots, because you're gonna miss it, miss what your target is. And the logic behind that is if you miss an inch by down here, you're going to miss by a foot down there. But the, the, the spots are closer instead of bowling at something that's 60 feet away, right? Yeah, right. And you have spots and you have arrows. And the boards are different colors. Sage Green on 11. Elizabeth Yates. No spare. Oh, another split for Sage Green. This one can be converted. You know, with this format, it's very difficult to tell who's winning. Yep. There's a strike. Hi, Madison Taraski. Her average is 133, which is high on the Keystone team. Like Jack was saying, uh, it's difficult because you're taking your t traditional five bowlers and splitting up between two lanes. So you have three on one lane and two on another to make up your full team for scoring. Chelsea Wood leaves the nine pin. On lane 13, Sky Bunner. Peyton Clapp on 11. Peyton throws a nice ball. She's got yeah, I think it's a hammer. <laughs> well, what I'm talking about, as you know, when you say someone throws a nice ball, it's usually how they throw it. That bowling slang. You know, and she while, follows I'm, while I'm talking about hammer, you know, the hammer ball originally was called the Fab Ball, which was manufactured by a man who lived in Sheffield Village named John Fabinich. Yep. When I was in my 20s, I could go to John's house and buy a ball that he stored in his garage. He just asked you how much you wanted, how much weight you wanted, and what color you wanted. He was an engineer, wasn't he? He was, he, but he didn't drive the train. <laughs> I remember he had bowling balls. I lived over on Colorado Avenue, and he had bowling balls that went down his driveway. Yep. And it became an international com uh, company. Yeah, he sold out really cheap. Yep. I remember when he first started making balls, he would just give them to people to try. Yeah, yeah. He was nice, a 
Nice convert for Natalie. Mankey on lane 13. Picked up that baby split on her right. I want to say he was an engineer like at uh, B of Goodrich or something in Avon Lake. What you, as a yeah, probably a, a chemical engineer. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you have to know something about bowling. Yeah. You just uh, don't go yep. in your garage and make a plastic circle. And a lot of people don't know that the balls aren't uh, one piece. There's multiple pieces to the ball. You know, the core. You're talking about the cover, the cover stock on the outside, but there's layers on the inside are different materials. Yeah, and the, and the manufacturer will put more weight on one side than the other side. Yep. And it'll react differently depending on how the ball is drilled. Yep. Oh, nice ball. Peyton yep. Clapp just got robbed. That's a solid eight. Lauren Woods with the spare on lane 13. It's Keystone's Chelsea Wood on 11. The Brooklyn strike. What do you mean by Brooklyn, Jack? Brooklyn, it's, uh, it's the, the, the side, if you're a right-hander, it's the one two pin. One and two pin pocket. For example, nope, that's not a Brooklyn. Left side of the head pin. Left side of the head pin, the one and the two. Yep. You still get a strike there, but it's the odds aren't as great. Oh, 10 pin for Sage Green. Yep. Nice ball. Elizabeth Yates. Nice ball. Strike. Nice ball. We're halfway through the first game, and uh, that's Elizabeth Yates' double. Yeah. The first double we've had today. Now, the Brookside boys and Keystone boys are on the four lanes to the left. Nate, the procedure is the same there. And there's JV and varsity. JV and varsity. And then our far right is everybody else. <laughs> Amherst and Wellington. So we have four schools uh, competing at the same time here. Varsities, JVs, varsity girls, and varsity boys. A lot of familiar names, too, uh, in the bowling circles of Lorraine County. As another nice ball by Peyton. See the scores. Uh, Sage and Peyton are pretty close together. And over here on 13 and 14, Looks pretty even as well. Lauren Roberts on 14, trying to convert and doesn't. But you can see with these four teams, uh, varsity girls, varsity boys, JV girls, JV boys, you have four teams competing at the same time. I remember when I was coaching, it was very, very difficult because you're you can't be at all all 12 lanes at one time. Yeah, you're running around. Yeah, so Matt Mankey here, he's giving me some advice to his varsity girls, and this is the, what we're going to basically focus on today's telecast. We did boys last year. We'll do girls this year. Yeah, you know, and what, bottom line is your coaching is, is done way before this. Absolutely. Nice conversion by Chelsea Wood on that baby yep. split. Yeah, it's all in practice. Sky Bunner has a bigger split on 13 and does not convert. That one a little wide. Boy, that comes zooming back. Yeah, nice ball, Sage. Sage Green's average is 138. Peyton Clapp is 168. Nice. 13, Natalie Mankey with a strike. And her average is 131. A strike. That's a double for Peyton Clapp. Lauren Roberts, left to seven pin. Now if you can see the scoreboard, it tells you like uh, on the board on 
lane 11 minus 42 and on 12 plus 42. But you have to remember it's three bowlers on 12. Lauren converts to seven pin. Page uh, number 13. And you can see 125 up and down. There's a difference between the two teams by 125. And like Jack said, three bowlers on one, one pair, two in the other. So after this first game, they'll take the three bowlers from, uh, let's say, uh, Brookside, and they'll add it to the two bowlers on the other pair, Brookside. So there's a total of five bowlers for the team score. And of course, Keystone's the same way. So if I interpret that right, Jack, uh, Brookside, they're, they're two bowlers here. They're down by 67 on this pair. And those three bowlers are up by 128, right? And you're, and you're, you're not even a math whiz. <laughs> so therefore... How many notes is that above? <laughs> So therefore, therefore, who's winning? The Brookside team is winning. Chelsea Wood, another spare. Ooh, you got that eight pin out from behind, hooked it around. Lauren Roberts. Left uh, seven to Sleeper. A lot of people here. I'll scan uh, Sp uh, Spivak lanes after after this shot by Sage. One of the rules nice. the high, high school athletic association has is that the bar in the establishments that have these kids bowling cannot be open. It's just nice seeing all the parents coming out, supporting their kids, like they would a basketball game and a wrestling match. Yeah, except it doesn't cost anything to come to this one. That's right. But Sage Green with the spare. They do have a lot of equipment that they're, I'm sure, contributing to. The schools don't provide the bowling balls and the bowling shoes. Yeah, and, and if you're a kid, things are changing quick. Yeah. Ninth frame. A little high. They can clap a little high on that one. Four seven. Natalie Mankey on page number 13. Working on a double. Page Green on lane 12. Nice, nice shot ball. for Sage Green. Yep. It's a way to go to the 10th frame. It's still pretty even. Still like. 49, 43, the same thing over here. Oh, it's up to 180. Hmm. Mankey made that spare on 13. She has a nice game going there. Yeah. Oh. oh. Nice ball, Sage. Nice ball. Yeah. In the pocket, she's, left the seven pin. She's going to be 30 pins over average. Must be the camera. Being on camera inspires her, right? Right. <laughs> She'll be signing autographs later today at the snack bar. <laughs> I think, is she a senior? According to your roster? Uh, Natalie Mankey is a junior. No, Sage. Well, Sage? I think 
Sage Green is a senior. I thought so, okay. Sage Green, 163. Nice game. And what's her average? 138. Yep. One, two splits, one open besides the split, and she spared and struck the rest of the time. Wow, oh, nice, nice ball. ball. Yeah. Oh, I missed that on camera, too. Sky Bonner with the spare in the 10th frame. I haven't scanned too much the other lanes, but everybody here is bowling with one hand. You want to talk about that, Jack? I saw one, one individual practicing with two, and that's the new thing. And it's right there on uh, lane seven, the Keystone, Keystone met, boy. Yeah. And on lane 10 as well. More and more every year, people are going two-handed. Yep. 169 for Peyton. 117 for Sky. Over her average. Sky's average 103. Mankey missed the two-pin spare in the tenth of a finish at 167, which is 30 pins over average. Nice. Again, look at that third, fourth, fifth frame. It's three splits in a row. Other than the tenth frame, she stayed clean the whole game. Splits will get you. Hey, she made one of those splits, so. Split, so. Lauren Roberts. Spare in the tenth. She's looking at 30 pins over average as well. Brookside has quite a tradition of uh, high school bowling, even before it became accept accepted in the Greater uh, in uh, Ohio Athletic Association. Outstanding teams back in the 70s and 80s and 90s. They bowled in Cleveland, and it's Cleveland Interscholastic because bowling wasn't really uh, a high school competitive sport in Lorain County that much. And then uh, in the 2000s, uh, we would bowl, 2003 I think it is, we switched from the Cleveland Interscholastic to the Lorain County League. And uh, Brookside's been with that ever since. Putting the numbers up, it looks like Brookside won that game. 762 to 587. But that's only one game. Only one game. There's one more. One more and then game. One Baker game. Right. And we'll talk about the Baker game a little bit different, a little bit later. Because it's a different format completely. As Jack said, they divide up the two, the, the five per, uh, person teams into two lanes, three on one and two in the other. And then they combine the scores to make a traditional five-person team. Baker's and, is totally different. And I believe the only reason they do that is to get these people out of here for their yeah. leagues that start at 6.30. Yeah, you got to bowl faster. Yep. Yeah, the, the bowling establishments really like high school bowling, but they have some restrictions because their evening leagues, their adult leagues. That pays the bills. Pays the bills, yep. Now we're going to have to wait until everybody's done here until we move over. Yep. All right. Do you want to take a time out here? 
We will take a time out here. All right. And you are watching Cardinal Community TV here at Spivak Lanes in Avon Lake. We'll be right back. Well, uh, I don't oh. think we're going to be right back. Oh, I think we're, we're starting. starting right now. All right. We're still at Spivak Lanes. <laughs> Not a Galate. Yeah, haven't changed our location yet. All right. <laughs> now they bowling. Uh, did they do any switching here? Nope, they stayed the same. Change bowling lanes. Same pay. Same. Nope, they just started on the opposite lane. Yeah. They started where they finished. Right. Same pair, different lane. Okay. Gotcha. Page Green started out with a strike. Nice. So you say uh, you think Brookside won the first match, uh, first uh, game? Yes, I do. All right. I'm not sure how they do the point system, uh, you know, uh, how many points for the first game, how many points for the second game, how many points for the Baker game. I'm not sure how they do that. I, I want to guess. Oh, nice, nice ball there yeah, by very Peyton. Nice. I want to guess that they put two points a game. And then... Uh, one for the Baker? One for the Baker, but I'm not positive. Oh, they play multiple Bakers, come to think of it. I think they do. We used to have a seven-point system. Two, yeah, I, I don't remember. Yeah, two, two, and two doesn't add up to seven. Nope. Maybe it does in a new math. <laughs> Skybunner uh, had open in the, in the first frame. Natalie Mankey trying to convert her nine-pence pair. But uh, this uh, conference is big enough that they have two divisions in it. And I think everybody bowls in both divisions. Division one gets the bowl against the division two, I think. That's a long season. I want to say it's 20, 20 weeks. I've been away from it for a while, so they change it every year. Seven pins on the first ball for Madison from Keystone on lane 11. Lauren Roberts on lane 14 through a strike for Brookside. Sky Bunner, seven on lane 13. What you see over time now is more, a lot of scores are much higher than they used to be. Yeah. 25 yep. years ago, you know, you were lucky if you had one 300 in a season. Now you have two or three every night. Yep. And that's because of the equipment, better equipment and better bowlers. Well, when we were kids, Jack, uh 180 was an outstanding, you know, adult average. I can't even remember that far back. <laughs> 180, 190. I was a secretary of our uh, men's league. And, uh, yeah, the better bowlers, you know, 180, 190. But now it's nothing heard of uh, seeing bowlers that average in one, uh, 230, 240. Yeah, you very rarely saw somebody with an average over 200. Yep. Make the 10 pin. Yep, nice spare. The game is all about spares, right? All about spares. Unless you throw a lot of strikes. <laughs> now, the expression is strikes will come. There's only so much you can do. You're going to uh, you're gonna be get hung up by a 10 pin or a tap, as we call it. But you should always make your spares as much as possible. Especially the 10 pin. Yeah, one pin spares. And like Ooh. Jack said, one pin spares are fine because then you, if you have a second ball for a spare ball, you throw it straight at it? Unless it's a 10 pin. Well, you, you don't have to worry about uh, pins taking out pins. It's just the ball against the pin, single pin. Except it's right next to that gutter. Yeah, I get that. You never miss a 10 pin, no? Never. I very rarely <laughs> miss a 10 pin. 
But if you throw a big hook like I know you do, Jack, it, it's 10 pins are a little bit more challenging. Nice shot there by Madison Trasky. Hence the reason a lot of people will go with a plastic ball and throw it with very little hook. Or if they're young, they throw it harder, which I don't know if that's the best way to go. Now, you know, what I do is I try to throw a backup ball. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, okay, but it still hooks, right? Hooks left, hooks yeah. right. <laughs> Oh, you you actually do? You do not. You don't throw a backup ball. But some people do. I do, too. Really? Yeah. It's one way to keep it from hooking. Yeah. But it hooks into the gutter. And the other way. <laughs> Make you on lane 14. Nine pins. Yeah. Oh, Chelsea missed a 10 pin on 12. So you talk about 300 games, Jack. Uh, how many 300 games have you had in your hit in a your couple, life? Two or three. No, or I four, think more than that. Or four. I think five. I don't know. Who's? <laughs> I don't know. I've only had one. But it's you know, it's been a while. Uh, still. I think we're looking pretty good at 90 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I'm, I'm shooting 300 is good, except I think uh, 800 is, is tougher. Oh, absolutely. I've never done that. 772 is my highest. Oh. Chopped it. When you chop a pin like that, you know as soon as you let it go. Yep. Well, Coach Mankey, he's a very good bowler himself, and it's it's great that you, the coach, your coach knows about bowling. I mean, it's one thing supervise kids, teach kids, but you got to know about bowling in order to do it too, and that really does help. You know, and it's much easier to get a kid who's never bowled before to teach him how to teach him the correct way. Yes. Rather than just break somebody's bad habits. Breaking habits. So that's tough. Especially when, uh, oh, I, I got a strike. Why should I change? You know, and they don't realize the luck aspect. You know, and it's the same thing in baseball and sure. bowling. Absolutely. As in basketball. Yeah. You know, if you had success doing things wrong when you're young, you get older, and it doesn't work anymore. Right. But they don't realize they're going to get older. <laughs> so they don't want to change until it's too late. <gasps> That's a nice Ooh, ball. Nice spare. Oh. oh, yeah, that was a spare. She threw a gutter on the first shot. I missed that. Peyton, uh, two opens in a row here. That was a nice shot. Not Very nice. Pin. Look at that. Right in the pot. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah, what they say is you move back a step or... Yeah, change the angle a little bit. Change your angle. But that pin, that five pin is going to swing around that ten. and I'm sorry, six pin. And it's going to go swinging around the ten pin. That's supposed to take it out. Here at the Nautical Lanes, there are 28 lanes. Yeah, years ago, <laughs> yeah. it used to be uh, on the south end of the building, used to be several pool tables. They took those out and added a few more lanes. Yep. These are Brunswick machines. Which uh, operate a little differently than AMFs. Yeah, I can't remember how many lanes they added. I remember the pool tables down here. 28. You, Shoreway had 24 lanes. Yes. But I don't know if Shoreway was they modeled. Added, they added four. They added four. Okay.
Spivak Lanes is hosting the Lorraine Bowling City Championships this, starting this weekend for the adults. Ouch. Everyone that bowls in the league pays a membership part of the affiliation of being a Lorraine Bowling Association, which is part of... Uh, nice fair. And you know, uh, that's getting kind of expensive too, yeah. because this year it's $25 per event. The bowl? Yes. Okay. And that singles doubles all events? Yes. Yep, so that's 75 bucks? That's that's at right. least, yeah. Yeah, once a year. Yeah, it's only money. That's right. Yeah, might as well just give them 75 dollars. <laughs> but it's a handicap tournament. Yeah. So if you're a lower average bowler like me, you're gonna get some handicap that gives you an opportunity to be able to compete with uh the higher average bowlers that get less handicap. Ooh, nice, nice ball. Went to the Brooklyn. Yep. Estelle looks. All those strikes look the same up on the up on the board. That's right. Looks like Brookside's still up. They're up about eighty some. On the two lanes? Yep. They call, it can all change when nice they get to the Bakers. There. Yeah, that's a good ball. Elizabeth Yates, nice ball. Oh, missed that 10 pin. Oh, 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 oh okay. good break there. Took the 10 out. Good. That would have been a nasty split. Coach Mankey uh, advising one of his players on his team. That's the one thing I remember uh, when I was coaching the kids. You help them line up because every lane they oil differently and you, you want to help the kids figure out what arrows, to, where to stand on the approach, what to shoot at on the lanes. Having another set of eyes, so. And then there'll be the, some kid that does it, hits the spot, you tell him, and doesn't have success, and it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they learn. Heck, I do that. <laughs> Maybe. Nope. Oh, that one's in a ditch. But that's just like a nine. If you can throw the spare on the strike. Yeah. Yeah. Spare up. For Peyton Clap on lane 12. On lane 13, Natalie Mankey. Seven count. Eight. It's nice seeing some of these kids with really solid fundamentals. And I would imagine that most of their parents bowl. Absolutely. Looking at Elizabeth on lane 12 here. For Keystone, she squares up her shoulders. She follows through. You'll see her at the foul line, whether she makes a spare or not. Right now, she's lining up, putting her feet. Five-step delivery. Oh, she kind of yanked it. She didn't follow through like she normally does. So she's probably thinking about something else. Like her coach told her something. Yep. <laughs> oh, you know what happened? Blame the coach. You know, you know what I, that's, you're thinking about not missing it. Yes. Yeah. 
But the fundamentals is, especially with bowling, doing the same thing the same way every time. You, you eliminate the chances of, uh, of not leaving a bad, bad shot. All right, let's see what Peyton does here. See, she only uses four steps. Yep, follows through nice. Which is the norm, I think. Yeah. That's how most people were taught early. Yeah, yeah. But then you get into timing issues. Some people, I know, I, I started with four step delivery. I went to five to adjust my timing. So when I'm at the foul line, you're releasing the ball at the right time. Peyton does an extra step at the foul line. One, two, three, four. And then she kind of catches her right. balance. Yeah. But she follows through well. So when she takes that extra step at the foul line, it's not hurting her that, mu uh, that much, really, because the ball's already gone. But someone's, someone's taught her how to ball. Well, her brother uh, is a decent bowler, too. Ah, uh, there you go. I think he's a lefty, though. Ten pin. Had a, that ball just didn't finish. Yep. Threw it nice, though. Elizabeth again. Let's see how they do on the ten pins. We got a couple of ten pins here on this pair. Cross alley. Whoop. Threw it out too far. Cross alley, stand left, throw right. And she got it. Yeah, that came out of the gutter, oh, did I think, it? didn't it? I don't. Yeah, she did. I didn't pick it up on the camera. Yeah, that's yeah. not a thing. You, you, the ball went in the gutter. It comes out. Yep. It doesn't count. Yep. And she knows. Yeah, she's, she's going to correct it. I hear the parents back here saying, you know, you got to change that. And she is. Stage left seven here. Let's see if she can bring it in. Sky Bonner on lane 13. Boys are done already over here on the left. <laughs> Lauren Roberts on 14. She throws the backup ball. But if it hits the pins and the right target, nothing wrong with it. Ball hooked. Too much bend on the end. Yep. Nice ball. Nice ball. Nice, nice conversion spare. by spare by Sky. Yeah. In Brooklyn that time. After we finish this, uh, we'll be able to total the scores and see how the their two game series are. Lauren Roberts picked that seven pin up with the backup ball. Yeah, good for her. That's not easy. Oh, chopped it. Three frames to go. Spare here, Chelsea Wood. Nelly Mackey on 13. All right. Looks like Brookside's up uh, 50 on the first pair. Fair. And they're up by 100 on the other pair. Nope, I'm wrong. They're down by 100. Oh. She's a little confused. Mad, mad at her coach. <laughs> Blame Sage. the coach. Sage. Come on, come on. Uh, all right. 
Let's see how Sage approaches uh, this uh, seven pin here. And Brooke Moore she left the 8-10 on 14. And you do it, you get one. Yep. Next to impossible to convert. Looked like she dropped it. Nice spare. Yeah. That could have been the nice best ball she threw on thrown. Yep. Nice conversion. Yeah, that ball just keeps drifting right. Left, rather. Sage got that one. Peyton Clap on 11. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, a little high, I yeah. thought. Yeah. A little, a little high, meaning a little bit uh, more ball on the head pin instead of the three pin. But it carried. And like I said, they all look the same on a score sheet. That's right. That's Lydia Gould on uh, 13, missing her spare. Looks like the boys are starting their bakers on the opposing lanes. And Brooke Moore, nine pins on 13. Natalie Makey on 14. Major Stavir. Oh, nice shot by Chelsea Wood. Ooh, 10 pin. That was a nice shot, too. Yeah, yeah. Nine for Sage Green on lane 12. She's a little high. Or she no, she went Brooklyn, didn't she? Yeah, it went through the nose. Nice shot, making that 10 pin. Nice all shot right. there by Sage. Very nice. It's all about spares. Peyton Clapp working on a strike. Came in wow. a little light. You know, it looked like she moved it, drifted to her feet to the corner that time. Couple boards, I think, yeah. This could be me, though. Maybe, maybe. Good try, good try. The splits are gonna happen. Peyton's struggling a little bit. She has uh, four opens up here. Plus the split. She'll come back. Oh, she 
let that out a little too far. It hurts on a spare. Sure does. Ten pins right there. Especially tenth frame. One forty seven for Mankey. Maybe split on lane 11 for Sage. Yeah, she can make this. Put the ball in between them. Or do it the hard way. Like you do it the hard way. You like to shoot the three pin at the 10 pin. That's more logical, I believe. I've seen people throw the ball between a three and they 10. Miss. Yeah. And hook it right through. Yep. Yeah. 134. Nice game, 131 for Lauren. Yeah. So yeah. they're done down over there. They'll get a little bit of a break before we start the baker. That was a good try. It's the only way to try to do it. in the 10th on a spare. It hurts. The key's done. Looks like Brookside won that game as well. Natalie Mankey was high on the Brookside team with the 314 series. Mm -hmm. 167 game, 147 game. Yes. They hit the space bar, we can see the results over here. Mm -hmm. 
You don't know hand signals. <laughs> All right. Sage and Peyton started with 160 games and finished with the 134 120 game. Both finished 297 series. Yep. So, how close do you think it is, Jack, between uh, these two pairs? How close are the, are the scores? Yeah. Brookside versus Keystone, so far I, before the Bakers. So far, I think Brookside's up about. <laughs> 200 pins. Oh, that much, huh? Okay. 130, yep. All right. Well, why don't we take a Cardinal TV time out here, and well, we'll come back, and we'll talk about the Baker games. What do you say? Okay, we'll do that and have a break. We'll uh, do what we have to do and look at everybody else in the crowd. All right. We'll start. be right back. Bye. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're back. We're going to start the Baker game, and what happens is each bowler per team gets two frames like the first and the sixth, the second and the seventh for the game. And then that score is added to their scores for the first two games, and then there's one more Baker game after that. And it's a different strategy than your traditional 10 frame bowler. Since each bowler has two frames out of the game, placement of the bowlers on your team, whether you want to put them in uh, what frame to have them bowl, first and six, or you want your best bowler usually in the 10th frame. So the sixth and 10th. But then that's there's a lot of strategy going on here. Fifth and 10th. Fifth and 10th, sorry. Yep. So it looks like right now we have an eight and an eight, so they're tied. Yeah. On the Bakers. On the Baker. And then they'll take the Baker games, the two Baker games, and add them to the other two games that we just scored. And right now, with all of it, everybody standing up, I can't see anything. Well, you can stand up. No, I don't want to stand up. <laughs> I'm too old to stand up. You want to want to run this camera? You no. can do that. <laughs> so Brookside has an open in the first frame. And what you want to do is, uh, if everybody's going to open, what you really want to do in a baker is build up on the score, get your spares together, get your strikes together. You can't change the lineup with it once you start the game. But it helps if you get two strikes in a row with two different bowlers. And if you're struggling throwing the first ball, you know, if someone has a spare before you, you, you want them to be able to get a lot of pin count on the next ball. So it's a team sport. See, Keystone had a spare in the first frame. Brooks had a spare in the second frame. But the second bowler only had one count. So they lost the spare, pretty much. But it's an interesting format that they decided to, to go with Bakers. Plus, you can bowl faster. Which makes the proprietors happy, right, Jack? Oh, yeah. Ten pin on lane 12. She's going for a spare ball. All right, nice spare. And 
and three of our bowlers are bowling on uh, on a different lane than they started with. So they're not quite familiar with the oil on that lane. Not all the lanes are the same, even though they're oil on the same. Because it depends where the bowlers on that lane are pushing the oil. Exactly. Left-handed bowlers, right-handed bowlers. Yep. Yeah, generally, you don't have very many lefties, so the shot for them doesn't change. Right, because there's, yep, fewer of them. Sam, up. Oh. It's 53 and a fourth for Brookside. So before the Baker's Jack, uh, how many pins were was Brookside up over Keystone? About 200. About 200, okay. So they need to make up 100 pins on each one of these Bakers to make it really close. And that's not going to happen. Strike in the fifth frame for Peyton. And did you say uh, Brookside's in fifth place or sixth place? Brookside's in fifth, Keystone's in sixth. Okay, so they'll get a little bit more space from them in the standings if they should pull this out. Well, they could jump too. True, true. Depending on the fourth place team. I want to say they wrap up their season the end of February, March in that area. It's a winter sport. I was talking to Adam Meshack earlier. His son's bowling on college in Kentucky, and uh, they're doing real, real well. But bowling, since it uh, became a high school sport, a lot of colleges you can bowl. Of course, probably not scholarships. I don't know. It depends. I think they do give you money if you're, you know, depending how important that sport is to your school. True. So we started at 4 o'clock, and it's 5-11 right now. So we bowled two regular games, and we're halfway through the first Baker in a little over an hour. You can see the scores now. Through the seventh frame, Brookside's up by about 50 pins. And of course, Keystone's on the right. They don't change lanes. Brookside's on the left. The A and the B doesn't mean anything. They'll switch lanes after the first Baker game.
nice. Oh, got a wiggle out of it. That's a nice shot for Page. That split was tough. So Brookside has one frame to go. Hey, Jack, I think bowling is all coaching, don't you think? Absolutely. It's all coaching. <laughs> I knew Coach Mankey would appreciate that one. Nice shot. nice shot. And just like traditional bowling, if you get a spare in the tenth, you get another shot. Well, you can't switch your team if you have more than five for the second game, can you? Yes, you can change your lineups. Yep. You can substitute too. If you have more than five people on your team, Once you substitute a bowler in, I don't think you can have, they can bowl more than once. So if you had six bowlers, if someone's struggling, you could, you could substitute once. Just like a basketball football game. They come, they go in, they do their, they bowl their frame, they come out. Brookside's got five girls, so they had a 152 game. 152, that's correct. Oh, double in the 10th. One oh six possible, so they'll be about about a little less fifty pins down in this first Baker, and then you'll add up to those two uh, regular games to get a grand total. Got her elbow out, took off on her. All right, now they'll switch lanes, right? The boys are, are done over here. Yep, yep. And they'll bowl on the same pair. They're just switching lanes from 11 to 12, 12 to 11. Yeah, people are finishing up. Go ahead, you announce that, Jack. I can't. Mm. According, according to my math, Brookside has 776 and Keystone 659. And we were talking about tournaments before, but this is all what they call scratch, right? They scratch, no handicap. No handicap. In other words, so if you have a, a younger bowler that has a lower average on your team, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's straight pin count. And you're at a disadvantage. Now, I don't believe there are any adult leagues in Lorraine County that are scratch. 25, 30 years ago, there was probably yeah. eight. Yeah. And we'd call those classic leagues, right? 
Classic League still, and you only got the better bowlers right. to bowl in them. Right. I mean, you could you could bowl in it, but, uh, you know, you don't have much chance of winning uh, if you have a 140 average against a 200 average bowler. Hence the reason they do handicap, to get more bowlers involved, give them a chance, especially in the youth leagues. But high school decided to go scratch, which I agree with. But is, it is discouraging if you're in a league where you're a 140 average bowler and people you're bowling against are all over 200. Yes. Yeah. But it's a fun sport that you can do your whole life. Winning, what do they say? Winning isn't everything. Yeah, it's the only thing. <laughs> no, what did, that, that was a misquote by uh, Vince Lombardi. He said, winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. Yes. And I notice here at uh, Nautica Lanes, Avon Lake, uh, it's the home facilities for Avon Lake, Brookside, and Avon. The number of bowling centers in Lorraine County has decreased. Oh, yeah. You know, Strawway's gone, Grafton Lanes is gone. Andorka, Stonies, Croatian, Croatian Club, the Saxon Club, Broadway. Yeah. While they're doing their Baker game, I'd like to remind you that this is a production by Cardinal Community TV and a district video club that's run by Mr. Cecil and Mr. Ferguson and Mrs. Blythe. And there's only one person on the crew today, that's Mr. Cecil. Yeah, I got a couple of kids that were sick, and of course they had to drive down here. Couldn't stay after school, but that was okay. It's it, it looks like Mr. Cecil's not going to have to edit anything I said <laughs> yet. Yeah. This year we started live streaming all of our matches, all of our games. A uh, couple times we'll we'll do the traditional. Record and po edit, and we'll post it up on our website at a later date. See, that's another thing that adults don't do is they don't cheer. Yeah. They swear. Everybody is finishing up now on this end, on the south end. Looks like everybody's done. Well, they're still bowling uh, down on three and four. I remember, Jack, uh, we talked about this earlier, getting bowling, high school bowling. Even there's even, there's uh, junior high or middle school bowling also, play a lot of schools. Um, it was very difficult to get the State Athletic Association to accept it. And one of the obstacles was, like you mentioned, they have to have a bowling facility to do it. And bowling facilities traditionally have bars, and alcohol advertising, and 
some wow. of the traditional places in the Ohio Athletic Association said no. So, fortunately, it changed. Well, smoking was the, is not one of the things you have to worry about anymore because you can't smoke inside anywhere. Right, right. Did I say smoking? I meant drinking. Oh, you Beer. said drinking. Yeah, yeah. And I remember going home, at, you know, when smoking was was happening, and you have to take your clothes off before yeah. you walk in a house Yeah. because it smells like smoke. If your parents didn't smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not. It's not possible to have a bowling alley where you, you know, only for youth. I think it's the same during the youth leagues on Saturdays. They don't open the bar. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it's because they're worried about the kids. I think right. they're worried about the parents. Right. Well, they, you know, they don't serve the purists. They don't serve alcohol at a basketball game, you know, in high school. And I get that. But if they could, they would. <laughs> well, I'm glad the high, athletic, the high School Athletic Association nationally opened up the possibility because there's a lot of, lot of bowlers participating that aren't normally in basketball or wrestling, high school sports during this time of year. Bowling, like Jack said, bowling can be, a, it's a lifelong sport. But it could be a year-long sport also. Well, we're winding down here, Jack. Winding down. Tenth frame for Brookside on lane 12. They're about the same as last game. Yeah. Tenth friend bowler throws a strike. That's what you want in a Baker game. in the pocket. Nice shot. Yeah, she didn't get a strike, but not much you can do about that. Peyton will go over and get her spare ball. Get a Throw a ball that doesn't hook as much. Hopefully throw straight at it. Make the spare. Whoop, whoop. Nope. All right, Brookside, 150. Nice Baker game. Pick it up, Chelsea. Pick it up. Eighty-seven. That concludes the second Baker game. About 180 pins Brookside won by. All right. Nice match. Well, you know, it's getting almost my bedtime. So it's almost time for me to go home. <laughs> All right, you want to give a recap, Jack? Let me give you the recap. Brookside uh, won both Baker games. They won both regular games and total they were, they were up about, about 150 pins and I think that's a result of Brookside's averages are higher than the Keystone's averages were so we could see a gap happening between fourth and fifth place or fifth and sixth place maybe Brookside goes up to fourth or third and Keystone down to sixth or seventh 
depending on who above them and below them, what happens. So uh, for the community TV and uh, video club, i like to say goodbye. My name is Jack Petrucci, and have a good evening, afternoon, or late morning, <laughs> depending on where you watch this. All right. Thanks a lot, Jack. Thank you. All right. All right, we're here at uh, Nautical Lanes, uh, Brookside against Keystone, and we're here talking to Coach Matt Menke. Uh, how would well, you think it went today, man? Actually, it was really well. I was very impressed today. The boys came up a little bit short, but they're a young team. We're starting three freshmen on that team. We're uh, you know, a little bit uh, – they need a little bit of work, but they're coming along. Uh, we had a big milestone. Uh, one of our freshmen, Chris, Christian Ortiz, Bowled a 166 game, which is his personal record so far. So he's doing fantastic for a freshman that's never bowled before. That definitely makes it uh, harder, as you can understand. He's just picking it up this season for the first time. He's doing outstanding. So just wanted to shout that out real quick. Uh, the girls' varsity, on the other hand, they won, which was fantastic. Uh, they beat Keystone. It was, uh, let's see, 1692 to 1333. So they did fantastic. They were super consistent across the board. Back on a winning streak now. So... Uh, been really, really proud of them. We've had a lot of personal issues with the team. As uh, a couple of a couple of your viewers might know, uh, one of our bowlers on the JV squad, Maggie Rising, has been in the hospital. Uh, she wasn't doing very well for a long time. Lost a couple of girls because of it. Uh, they just couldn't bring themselves to bowl without her. So we, uh, you know, the girls have battled through that. And we're trying to do that for her and want to let her know and her family know if they do watch this that we're all thinking about them. And uh, can't wait to get her back out on the lanes. And uh, she was really a, she was kind of the spark plug for the team for a lot of these girls. So not having her there leaves a big hole for these girls to fill. And uh, they've done it admirably. They really have. Um, so, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're coming along. They're coming along. We're, hopefully we're peaking at the right time. Yeah. So Excellent. Very good. You, yeah. have a lot of, you got a lot of bowlers still. I see. Yeah. Coach Green's out here helping you oh, out. Yeah, and, yeah uh, she's been a big help as usual. Yep, yep. Yep. Um, yeah, just really Good. proud of them. They're being they're becoming more consistent, which is the key. Yep. You know, being consistent, we uh, we're looking at in the next few years. Looks like we have quite a few seventh and eighth graders looking at bowling, which is very very impressive. Great. It'll be uh, be huge for the program. Keep it keep the pipeline going full of bowlers. So Absolutely. it'll be be good. How long does your season go till? So we're done in, let's see, the second week in February is the oh, uh, okay. sectional tournament. So okay. then depending on how we do there, it could go a little bit longer than that. All right. So, yeah. And you're losing a couple seniors this year? Yeah. Yeah, we're losing uh, three seniors on the girls' side. We're losing one seniors on the boys' team. Okay. So, Good. yeah. Good to see you got the, yep. the youth going, too. Oh, Good. yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So. Well, thanks a lot, Matt. I appreciate it, and congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. All right. You're watching Cardinal Community TV and signing out. Sky Bunner, Senior, Brookside Bowler. Natalie Mackey, Junior, Brookside Bowling. Lauren Roberts, Junior, Brookside Bowling. Carol Presley, Junior, Brookside Bowling. Sage Green, Senior, Brookside Bowling. Abby McDaniel, Sophomore, Brookside Bowling. Maggie Rising, Brookside Bowling, Sophomore. Peyton Clapp, Senior, Brookside Bowling.